Right, let's get straight into it. This is no fixed course and we are doing layering and blending. Stick around to the end of the video because we'll be covering Ben Kometz's loaded brush technique as well. So we'll start off with the layering and we'll use yellow because a lot of people find yellow to be quite difficult. So you want to drop your base coat in. We've used Avalon Sunset here. And you put your first layer on, which is Uriel Yellow. Now just block it in. You might need a couple of coats on this, like so. Probably about two or three layers if you get it nice and thin. And then you add in your highlight, which is in this case is Dawn Yellow. So this is basic layering. So you do dark, mid, and then highlight, which is your, your lightest tone. Now what we want to do is we obviously want to make that transition a lot smoother. So we mix in the colors that you want to blend together. So for layering purposes, this would be Avalon Sunset and Uriel Yellow in a 50-50 mix. And we just paint those over the joins where the two colors meet. Same for the highlight, so a 50-50 mix of Dawn Yellow and Uriel Yellow. Now this creates a smoother layered transition. It's not as smooth as you could get it, so we'll be diving into that a little bit uh, in a sec. But that just gives you the, the absolute basics. That That is layering. That's, that's all you have to do is just create transitions between light and dark. And you can just extend those as you see fit. Obviously, this is just a little piece of plastic card tubing to test on. Now, that is a glaze. So that is a very, very thin mix of the previous step. So a 50-50 mix of base coat and Euro Yellow. You wipe most of it off the brush and then you just paint that over the transitional area, which is the where the two parts meet. And same again for where the highlight meets. So again, 50-50 mix of Dawn Yellow and Euro Yellow. Do this a couple of times. Obviously for this video, this is fairly rough and ready. It's quite hard to do really complicated stuff like this on camera. Uh, but the more time you take, the better it'll look. Remember to let each layer dry completely before you move to the next step. Because if the paint isn't dry, you'll push that paint away from the surface of the model and it'll create a, a horrible rough texture. And just keep going backwards and forwards as needed with thin glazes just to smooth everything out. So for the next step, we'll use red. So the layering process for this, which will, uh, I finally managed to get palette cam on this one, but uh, there were some recording issues. So that's the only one with the palette cam. But we've started with corn red and layering on Mephiston red. And then we've got two highlights of Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. So we'll do the Mephiston red first, which is that there. And then we go in with Evil Sun. So you, your, your basic steps will be pretty much the same across the board. The method with which we transition them this time though is slightly different. So what we're doing is we're getting a little bit of thinned paint. And this is no, there's no mixes here. This is just Mephiston red. And then we go over the join from corn red to Mephiston red and just push the paint towards Mephiston red. So whatever color you've got on the tip of your brush, push towards where that color is. And then you do the same with the Evil Sun Scarlet. So you get Evil Sun Scarlet on your brush and you push that towards the main block of Evil Sun Scarlet, which is what we're doing right now. Take your time, nice and smooth, let each layer dry, and the end result will be good. The size of brush you use as well is quite important. Uh, if you use too big of a brush, then you're loading up too much water and can potentially uh, drown the whole model in, in very watery paint quite easily. So here we're going in with the Wild Rider Red. So again, just drop your highlight in, 
This makes it really good. This is the sort of the initial stages of non-metallic metals uh, because you're, you can very easily block in where your highlights are going. And then we're doing the same thing again. Take Wild Rider Red, very thinned, take most of it off the brush and just sort of push it towards where your highlight is. You can do that a couple of times just to sort of build up the, the amount of colour that you've got on there. And with this technique you can you can make this as, as narrow or as wide as, 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 as you want really. So this is Loaded Brush. So as the name suggests, load up your brush with a thinned version of your base coat and then put a dot of your very brightest highlight colour on the end of the brush, unthinned. And because you've already loaded up your brush with the base colour, when you put it down on the model, the two colours mix together. Now it is very, very important for this that you don't use too big of a brush because otherwise then you flood the model with the base colour which stops the transition working. So you've noticed I've swapped to a very small brush. But Loaded Brush is incredibly quick and once you nail it, which takes a bit of practice to be honest, but once you nail it, it's very quick and it produces an incredible result, especially for non-metallics. And what you can do here is just glaze over your base colour just on the very edges just to smooth things out a little bit more if you want. That is the very basics of layering, blending, a bit of glazing and a bit of loaded brush. So I hope that was useful to everybody. Thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you ever so much for all the support and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.